So welcome to this Tobacco University video. Here we're going to be looking at selecting the one cannabis plant out of a million, kind of like playing the lottery here, finding that one unique individual that would be warranted for going through the process maybe of propagating and cloning and breeding out further. So realize that with plants there's some genetic in uh, inherent genetic variability. When growing a population of plants there's some that Sometimes just one just stands out. Now what causes that plant to stand out may be uh, different for different growers. That standout is basically at the discretion of the grower. Standouts could be the morphology. Is it a tall or short plant? Does it produce a lot of CBD or CBG for cannabinoids? What type of terpene profile does it have? These are things to consider as well as the time that it flowers is an earlier late flower. Does it this plant tend to yield a lot of quantity or is it a plant that is producing a lot of quality? Uh, does it need a lot of pruning and is it resistant to diseases? And if so, which ones? These are just some topics we'll be covering here in this video. Now the morphology is the first one. So keep in mind morphology is looking at the structure of the plant. And tall plants may be better suited for larger yields per plant, while shorter plants are more advantageous for the indoor market. So a lot of uh, growers may be breeding for those that are growing in grow tents. That's a targeted audience, so that can be advantageous. Internode spacing is what should be measured, and that's the space between nodes. Tighter internode spacing means it's going to be a more compact plant, and greater internode spacing means it's going to be a taller plant. However, when you get those tight, compact plants that can also increase the density and also increase the potential for diseases or insects to kind of hide within the plant. Then there's the cannabinoids. So THC and CBD are what's commonly selected for, but some breeders are looking now into developing strains that have greater concentrations of other cannabinoids. In particular, breeding for CBG has gained some interest for its potential uses. So just another consideration there that just goes beyond the THC and the CBD when we're looking at breeding and finding a genetic standout. In addition, there's terpenes. So the, not only the cannabinoids are important, but the effects of a given product are receiving more attention. Breeding for and selecting a unique terpene profile can make a strain stand out and be sought after. The difficult part is that the terpene profiles can be associated uh, with tastes and effects, which are going to be interpreted differently by different people. And this is why typically the cannabinoids and the percentage of those is given a little bit more weight or a little bit more kind of favoritism than the terpenes, because that's kind of flavors what one person may like, another person may not like. Then the flowering time. So this can uh, relate to when pre-flowers are first seen or when an autoflower actually starts to get into the flowering phase. Early flowering can help reduce the duration needed to complete the growth cycle, so that can be important for growers, getting more generations in the same uh, duration of time. And delaying the flower time can increase the time in the required vegetative phase. And this can help build a bigger plant structure, which may be advantageous if you're seeking to breed a high biomass producing plant. So again, you can see again the pros and cons with each there. Then we get into just general yield. You know, how much is the plant producing? Well, regarding yields, this can be related to one of two main factors. One could be quantity. And those are for those looking to just the total amount of plant product. How much product is produced by the plant? Then there's also quality. And here the breeder is looking more for at the chemicals and, and compounds produced and not so much the total plant material. Of course, most growers would like both high quality and a lot of and a lot of product that is of high quality. But sometimes you may have to select one over the other. Some growers will sacrifice the total quantity for improved quality, which can be directly related to the terpenes uh, produced, for example, there. Then we get to plant behavior, and this is how much you want to fight with the plant, so to speak. Um, how easy is the plant to grow? This can refer to how well the plant uh, su uh, supports itself on its own. If it's a strong plant, or does it kind of require or need staking? Also consider how much pruning or what pruning method might be a good fit for the plant's natural style. Weaker plants that require staking should be considered more for indoor applications compared to those growing um, outdoor or those that want to be a little more hands-off in production of their plants. Then there is disease resistance. So this is often overlooked, but how resistant is a plant or strain to a certain diseases can be a very important uh, uh, to be bred into genetic uh, lineages. Very important trait to consider. This can become obvious in a large growing area if all plants have a disease, but there is one that disease, quote, missed in the sense that it just simply has resistance to that. 
because um, this doesn't happen, like powdery mildew, for example, would spread over the whole area. That means that one plant that isn't diseased has inherent resistance, and that can be very advantageous to any breeding program. Uh, this can be a very desirable quality and makes for a great addition to a breeding program uh, if you can get some disease resistance. Here we see in the images powdery mildew, but there's also bud rot to consider as well, as well as a host of others. Different is not always better though. So just because you're growing a thousand plants and one of them's different, mutations are often not beneficial. But in the case where they are, um, growers should consider propagating that plant to preserve those genetics. Often cloning is suggested to ensure the exact same genetics are copied and then multiplied. So that's just again, important mutations, typically not a good thing, but in certain cases they can be and you wanna make sure you have methods of preserving, recognizing that number one, and then preserving those genetics. And this is where attention to detail is important. You wanna look carefully at all plants, keeping good records is an important part of this process. If you happen to get lucky and find that unique genetic kind of profile, you wanna be able to capture and preserve it and not lose it or lose track of it. Um, you wanna make sure that you're able to take advantage of that unique situation, because it might be truly that one in a million. Now that selection process that you may go through uh, can take a long time. Uh, even longer if you do not know what you're looking for, so keep that in mind. Even being very selective and targeted still can take a very long time. Either select a standout plant, continue to breed it, and select for a consistent and repeatable qualities, or determine what you want to breed for, and then start to select for those qualities. So that's two different routes you can kind of take uh, with the breeding process. Uh, so again, being attention to detail, knowing what you're looking for, finding genetic standouts, having good cloning procedures. This is all ways that when you identify that one in a million, you can hopefully capture that. And I wish you the best of luck in this process if you wish to go down this route because it can be challenging uh, and take a lot of time, but also very rewarding in the end.